John Fitzgerald Kennedy, born on May 29, 1917, in Brookline, Massachusetts, into the prominent Kennedy family, emerged as one of the most iconic figures of the 20th century. His life was an unique and vast world of distinguished military service, compelling oratory, ambitious political career, and a presidency that, although tragically cut short, left an indelible mark on the United States and the entire planet. Kennedy's influence spanned the spheres of space exploration, international relations, domestic policy, and the cultivation of a new generation of Americans inspired by his vision of progress and peace. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the second of nine children of Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. and Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy. JFK was born into a family with deep roots in public service and political ambition. His early years were shaped by his family's expectations, his father's wealth, and his mother's discipline. Despite battling various health issues throughout his childhood and young adulthood, Kennedy's upbringing was filled with educational opportunities, leading him to attend prestigious institutions such as the London School of Economics and Harvard University. At Harvard, John Kennedy wrote his senior thesis on Britain's unpreparedness for World War II, which was later published as Why England Slept. This publication showcased his early interest in international affairs. John Kennedy joined the U.S. Navy in 1941, and after the attack on Pearl Harbor, found himself commanding PT-109 in the Pacific Theater. John Kennedy's war years significantly influenced his personal development and political career. John's heroic actions in rescuing his crew after their boat was rammed by a Japanese destroyer earned him the Navy and Marine Corps Medal. This episode of bravery and leadership would become a cornerstone of his political image. After the war, John Kennedy entered politics, successfully running for the U.S. House of Representatives in 1946 and serving three terms. In 1952, Kennedy was elected to the U.S. Senate, defeating incumbent Republican Henry Cabot Lodge Jr. Kennedy's Senate years were marked by his focus on foreign affairs and labor issues, though his record was also criticized for its lack of legislative achievements. It would take a few more years, but this would soon change. John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign in 1960 was buoyed by his charismatic personality, eloquent speeches, and the first ever televised presidential debates. Kennedy's campaign captured the imagination of the nation, especially the youth and young adults, and both men and women, and also the many diverse peoples within America itself. Kennedy's call to action, encapsulated in the phrase, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country, was spoken during his inaugural address. This now famous phrase set the tone for his administration's focus on civic responsibility and public service. Kennedy asked Americans to become proactive, not just within their own country, but around the world. Kennedy did not want the youth of America to feel entitled and become passive. Kennedy asked the youth and young adults of America to get up and do something about their own problems and their own dreams and to make new inventions, and to change the world not by domination, but by doing things better and with peace. Kennedy's influence on the space program was profound. In response to the Soviet Union's early successes in space exploration, John set the ambitious goal of sending an American to the moon before the end of the decade, culminating in the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. Sadly, John Kennedy would not live to see men land on the moon. Kennedy's commitment to space exploration was not only a matter of national pride, but also a strategic move in the Cold War space race. The American space program under Kennedy was focused on peace and technology and knowledge and not war. Though the rocket technology was birthed mostly from German Nazis and World War II, Kennedy and NASA's lead scientist of the 1960s, Werner von Braun, led the space program to have peaceful and scientific motivations that might one day unite the world through mutual exploration and learning.
However, despite grand intentions for humanity's benefit, the rocket technology has always been commandeered for war and other ulterior motives. John F. Kennedy's approach to Vietnam was cautious, reflecting his broader aversion to the escalation of military conflict. While he increased the number of military advisors in South Vietnam, he remained hesitant about committing ground troops. This hesitation would end with his successor, Lyndon Baines Johnson, on the day after John Kennedy was assassinated in November 1963. John F. Kennedy's relationships with Lyndon B. Johnson, his vice president, and J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, were complex and often fraught with terrible and hostile tension. Despite their political alliance, Kennedy and Johnson had a strained relationship, exacerbated by Kennedy's reliance on his brother, Robert F. Kennedy, as attorney general. John's relationship with Hoover was equally complicated with Hoover holding significant leverage over Kennedy through his extensive surveillance and information gathering operations. Essentially, J. Edgar Hoover kept power by blackmailing American presidents and politicians and civil rights leaders. No human lives a perfect and saintly life. J. Edgar Hoover always managed to collect massive amounts of dirt on everyone around him. And with this dirt of blackmail, J. Edgar Hoover was able to build castle walls of mud around himself. However, these blackmailing techniques have soiled the American justice system to this day. Eventually, the only people in organization to get dirt on and blackmail J. Edgar Hoover himself was the Mafia. How was this done to America's chief police officer? Organized crime snapped incriminating photographs of J. Edgar Hoover and collected their own forms of blackmail and threatened J. Edgar Hoover with extremely embarrassing exposure. Thus, during J. Edgar Hoover's tenure, the Mafia in America was mostly safe from arrest and prosecution, at least from J. Edgar Hoover and his G-men. But the American Mafia was not safe from Robert F. Kennedy, Attorney General under JFK. But that is a different story, a story that mostly ended with assassination of his brother, the President. It seems, for what they considered good cause, many people in many organizations wanted John F. Kennedy dead. Before John Kennedy's assassination, his youthful energy and optimistic vision appealed to a new generation of Americans, inspiring them to engage in public service and embrace the possibilities of a new frontier. Kennedy's establishment of the Peace Corps in 1961 exemplified this appeal. The Peace Corps offered young Americans the chance to contribute to international development and mutual understanding. John Kennedy's aspirations to change America and the world were evident in his push for civil rights legislation, efforts to reduce nuclear tensions, and initiatives to combat poverty. However, Kennedy's willingness to engage in dialogue with the Soviet Union and his cautious approach to military intervention were sources of contention reflecting the broader anxieties of the Cold War era. Not everyone in America, nor the world, appreciated John Kennedy's calls for international peace and understanding. Many people still wanted war, and many people still wanted either America or themselves to dominate the world. It seemed the country itself was being commandeered by a few people and a few organizations for their own ulterior motives. The assassination of John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas, shocked the world and left an unresolved legacy of what might have been. While Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the assassination, numerous theories have since emerged, suggesting various motives and conspirators, ranging from organized crime and anti-Castro-Cuban exiles to elements within the U.S. government. These theories often highlight John F. Kennedy's perceived threats to entrenched interests, both at home and abroad, due to his progressive policies, his attempts at detente with the Soviet Union, and his reluctance to escalate military conflicts.
John F. Kennedy's presidency, though brief, remains a defining era of American history. His ability to inspire through his speeches, his commitment to exploring new frontiers, both in space and on Earth, and his vision of a more just and peaceful world continue to resonate. The complexities of his policies, the challenges he faced, and the potential of his unfinished presidency contribute to the enduring fascination and admiration for his leadership. Kennedy's legacy is a reminder of the impact of visionary leadership and the importance of striving for a better world, even in the face of the greatest challenges. of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. If you learned something today and enjoyed our video, Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Feel free to join our discussion about simple and honest history in the comments section. These little gestures of gratitude helps us make more videos for you. Stay curious, stay enlightened, keep an open mind and fill it with simple and honest knowledge.